Well, good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining me on our healing live stream tonight, Tuesday, September 15th. Uh, my name is Clint Kaler. Tonight, we're going to be teaching on healing, teaching on the kingdom, uh, dispelling some myths. In fact, that's we're in the middle of a series about uh, traditions that stop God. Uh, sometimes you hear the phrase, killing sacred cows, and a sacred cow goes back to the, the uh, picture of you know, a starving nation who worships an animal that could cure their hunger, but their uh, beliefs prevent them from taking hold of or uh, feeding themselves with what's right in front of them. And oftentimes we find ourselves in that case where God has provided clearly uh, something to us, and because of a doctrine of men or because of a tradition of men or even a doctrine of demons, we, uh, we hold ourselves apart from that thing, and that's exactly what happens many times with healing. Uh, there, is no, there is no roadblock to healing. The only roadblock to healing is the fact that you believe there are roadblocks to healing. But as far as ministering healing goes, uh, there are some things that I can do uh, to stop the power of God from flowing through me. And that's one of the things we're teaching uh, during our healing live streams is that there is nothing that can stop the power of God from touching your body. You can't stop it. Your unbelief can't stop it. The devil can't stop it. God definitely does not want to stop it. The flow of power that heals comes from the sons of God. Now, if I as a son of God hold up a tradition that's greater uh, than the word of God or my belief in that tradition is greater than the word of God's promise, for healing, then that will stop healing from flowing from me. But if I have no blockage in me, then the power of God is flowing freely, and there is nothing that can stop that power. And I'm making reference to a verse, Mark 7, uh, 7, 10 to 16, in that area. Uh, Jesus is, is teaching, he says, For Moses said, Honor your father and your mother, and he who curses father or mother, let them be put to death. But you say, if a man says to his father or mother, whatever profit you might have received from me is Corbin or a gift that is a gift to God, then you no longer let him do anything for his father or mother, making the word of God of no effect through your tradition. Uh, and then he goes on to say, which you have handed down and many such things you do. So we're going to be talking about that tonight, another another tradition that stops the power of God, another tradition that keeps prisoners of war locked up in their chains, another um, tradition of men that dishonors God. And even it goes on to say, uh, Jesus goes on to say, uh, there is nothing that enters a man from outside which can defile him, but the things which come out of him, those are the things that defile a man. So the, the, the things that I believe, if they are um, uh, held up over the word of God, then I am defiling myself. And not only that, I'm preventing freedom from coming to you. So we're going to be talking about tonight, if you're joining us for the first time, uh, and you want to receive prayer for healing, or you have a family or friend or loved one that needs prayer for healing, needs breakthrough, you can go to healjoplin.com. You can find there a form. And on that form, uh, let me get that up there for you. Uh, on that form, you can fill out the request, and you can even uh, request a prayer cloth. And we speak... Uh, uh, to these prayer cloths to heal the sick. And when we send them out, uh, we get testimonies back of the sick being healed, of cancers running, of tumors running, of stage four cancer running, and all, all manner of, of sicknesses and ailments and different things, traumas have been healed by these prayer cloths. So we'll be happy to send you one of those. Uh, also, if you send us a prayer request within the first 24 hours, we're going to engage you uh, with power. We're going to uh, send you back if, the, if it's for you or someone that you can forward this uh, email to, we'll email you back a recorded prayer. And that prayer alone has been extremely effective um, in ministering life and healing to sick bodies. Now, one thing that we have continually taught, and this is modeled by Jesus' life, this is modeled by the apostles and the disciples and the entire New Testament, is that when we uh, when we say we pray for healing, that, that's really not the way it puts it in the Bible. Uh, the Bible uh, says to heal the sick. So when we heal the sick, we're not actually asking the Father to do anything. 
We're not asking the Father to come and heal the sick. We are healing the sick. Now, does that mean that it's our power and we're doing it? Not at all. It's God's power and it's God's glory uh, that, that does this. But he still said, heal the sick. So when we put our hands on or when we speak the word or when we uh, speak over a, a piece of cloth like this uh, out of Acts 19, that we are obeying God and we are releasing power at will. And we can release power at will, sons of God, in order to heal the sick. There is never a time when God wants to wait. There's never a time when God does not want to heal. God has already healed. And he just commands us to go as we go, heal the sick. As we go, cast out demons. As we go, raise the dead. As we go, freely release the kingdom, proclaiming the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And that is really the greater narrative, the greater story behind all of this, that when Jesus came, the kingdom of heaven came, and then he went, he was uh, crucified, buried, and rose again and was glorified. And when he was glorified, and went back into the heavens with the Father to take his seat. He sent his spirit back, which was really the whole point, getting his spirit back on the earth, back into man, and creating a new race of people where there's Jew nor Gentile, where there's uh, female nor male, where there's slave nor free, uh, the racial thing is gone, the uh, gender thing is gone. Everyone who follows Jesus and is born again uh, and has been cleansed uh, of uh, sin can walk in the same works that Jesus walked in, can do. In fact, Jesus said, you'll do the same works in fact, even greater. So that's our promise to us. And I tell you, it doesn't happen uh, automatically. You've been programmed by the traditions of men to fail. The tradi traditions of men have programmed your mind and heart to fail at following in the footsteps of Jesus. And we have to be aggressive uh, in our response to these traditions. I have seen traditions of men slave enslave some of the most gifted and talented and, uh, and uh, experienced leaders. Now, did, is, is, this, is this something that God wants or desires? No. He wants us to walk in the light, in the truth, displaying, or like the Bible says, putting, uh, bringing forth evidence to all nations of the Son of God, of Jesus. So, Tonight, we're going to talk about that. Um, just want to let you know that we do three of these a week. We do uh, Tuesday and Thursday night at 6.30 p.m. live stream just for healing. Then at Sundays at 1.30 p.m., uh, my wife Haley joins me and we do a kingdom teaching. Uh, we talk about current events and we just really just do our best to speak the truth to you and set people free. We pray for you. Um, also, if you're near the southwest Missouri area, uh, we'd like to invite you to join us for church on Sunday. That's Sundays at 3 p.m., and you can go to transfigured.church to find out more about it. We are raising up a brand new type of people for a brand new day. Uh, we're very intentional about what we're doing, and we're very excited about what we're doing. I invite you to go uh, check out our vision for uh, Church Trans Transfigured at transfigured.church. Um, all right, I think that's it. Let's get into our teaching. If you're sick or you know someone who's sick, I invite you to uh, to kind of focus now and also share this uh, stream with them. Now, last week we talked about unbelief. Unbelief is not necessarily the fact that you don't believe, although it could be, I guess, but if you're a believer uh, following Jesus, born again, we would assume that you're not an unbelief since you are a believer. Um, but uh, the unbelief could be the fact that you're believing the wrong things. So last week we talked about unbelief. You can go watch that. Uh, this week we're going to talk about the tradition of men that's been handed down to us called, uh, you can say it many different ways, but uh, I'm going to say it this way, does God still heal? Does God still heal? Is healing for today? Well, the short answer is yes. In fact, uh, the Bible clearly states that Jesus purchased healing for us in the atonement. 
So saying, does God still heal? It's kind of like saying, um, you know, if you if you have an inheritance coming from uh, your your great uncle and you're, you're written in the will, does my great uncle still give me his inheritance? Well, it's it's written in the will. <laughs> it's already done. It's yours. You can have it. So when Jesus was crucified, uh, when he was beaten, when he was whipped, when he was crucified, and the blood was shed for you and me, we know that at that moment, that salvation was made possible for everyone who called on his name. Even the thief on the cross right next to Jesus uh, said, Remember me, Lord, when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus responded to him that indeed he would be with him in paradise on that very day. So we know that anyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. From Scripture it says that. But when it comes to healing, we have a bit of a, of, a, of a rub, a bit of a different theology. Does God still heal today? Why is that? Because at some point, someone tried to bring healing. Someone prayed for healing. Someone tried to heal the sick. Someone tried to do what the Bible said to do, and nothing happened. So what happens next? They create a tradition of men or a doctrine of men or a doctrine of demons. They come up with all kinds of excuses, and maybe you've done this yourself, come up with all kinds of excuses to explain away our failure. And we have loads and loads of these excuses to explain away our failure. And a lot of people may have a, an issue with that word when I say failure, but if Jesus says, heal the sick, and I fail to heal the sick, it is a failure on my part. Why? Because I need to take responsibility for healing. This is all about responsibility. And I, we teach our people that because Jesus healed everyone that came to him, we can heal everyone that came to us. Do we have 100% results yet? No, we don't. Uh, in my house, though, I've got over 90% results with my family. And... Um, we have fought hard uh, to get those results. They come down, the percentages come down a little bit when I'm outside of my family, but my family is all in agreement about healing, all in agreement about the kingdom. We're all unified in it. Nevertheless, I know of people and personally know people who get results 100% of the time when they pray for certain types of diseases and sicknesses. So, if Jesus prayed and 100% were healed, and if the apostles prayed, which they did, uh, uh, multiple instances in the Bible says that the apostles healed them all. If the apostles can do it and Jesus can do it, you and I can do it. What's the problem? Well, there could be several problems, but one, we'll start with this week with the traditions of men. We are believing something uh, like uh, the scripture I just read that causes the word of God to be of no effect. The Bible says that he sent his word to heal and we can believe something, uh, we can have a belief that trumps the Word of God or that causes it to lose its power or causes it to have no effect. Can you believe it? It's true. It can happen. So <clears throat> let's settle the issue once and for all about healing. How, did, how was healing part of the atonement? If we can be saved, we can be healed. In fact, we... The same thing when this when Jesus died, healing was made possible and uh, uh, salvation was made possible. As easy as someone can be saved, they can be healed as well. First Peter two twenty four, he himself bore our sins in his body on the tree that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. Now here's an interesting verse that says Jesus died carrying your sins and my sins on his, in his body on the tree or when he was crucified on the cross. What's the first thing it says after that? That you may no longer sin, that I may no longer sin. In the Greek, it literally means that we would become dead to sin. That doesn't mean we've just been washed uh, of our sins and you know we're going to continue to sin and but we can ask for forgiveness no that means that sin is over we are dead to sin this is the normal christian life 
This is a normal lifestyle for the sons of God that we would not sin. In fact, that we would be dead to sin. Can you imagine being dead to sin? I know so many are overrun with with, uh, lusts and, and desires and habits that they can't break through. But when the When the blood of Jesus touches your life, it causes a transfiguration inside of us that causes us to become dead to sin. It is possible. Oh, yes, it is. Next thing it says that you might be dead to sin is live for righteousness, that we might live for righteousness. What does this even mean? This is righteousness is the kingdom of heaven sent it all things right through the, through the blood of Jesus on this planet, through the sons of God, by the Spirit of God. There is chaos. There is destruction, death, decay. Sin has entered the world. But Jesus has started a process of the kingdom overcoming all things. Jesus said, I have take, uh, take, uh, be at peace because I have overcome the world. Now, what does that mean? Does that mean everything is overcome in our life and around us? No, because... We are here operating in his stead, uh, acting on his behalf by his spirit. We are now on the same mission with the same anointing, the same message, the same power, the same works and miracles, doing the things that Jesus did. The sons of God are here to set all things right, to bring chaos into order, or to live to righteousness. What is righteousness? Is everything that is right with God. It is the rightness of heaven, bringing the rightness of heaven to earth. That means as practical as, well, dying to sin, but also as practical as shutting down sex trafficking, shutting down human trafficking, shutting down uh, uh, drug trafficking, also healing families, uh, putting the lonely in the families, uh, seeing salvation sweep our cities, seeing the broken healed, seeing bodies healed, uh, what about this? What if you can make what if you can make your city a cancer-free zone? What if you took responsibility for cancer to kick it out of your city? That is certainly something that we are taking responsibility for in our uh, region in Joplin, Missouri area, that cancer would be a no-go zone, that we would literally make this a cancer-free zone. Can it happen? Absolutely. It is going to happen on the entire planet at some point. And we are in that process right now. So that we might die to sin, that we might live to righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. This is past tense. You have been healed. People can even be healed right now as I say this. You have been healed. By his wounds, you have been healed. The literal wounds are the stripes and the damage that happened to Jesus' body as he was uh, being beaten and whipped and crucified. These wounds, these damages, these bruises, uh, all the places where his body was opened was for your healing. He took on, he took on uh, destruction that you might live in wholeness. Okay, he, he took on, uh, here's another scripture, that he became impoverished that you might become rich. Um, He took on depravity. He took on the curse. He took on everything that exists in this earthly created realm that is not of heaven. He bore it and it was buried with him. Then he defeated it by raising from the dead. It stayed in the grave and he came out uh, a glorified being, a glorified son of God, the first of many glorified sons, the Bible says. So what do we know? Is healing for today? 100%. How can it be for today? Because it's already been done. If you can be saved, you can be healed. Uh, I'll read 1 Peter 2.24. That was the English Standard Version. Uh, This is the Passion Translation. It just says it a little differently. He himself carried our sins in his body on the cross so that we would be dead to sin. There's that one. And that we would live for righteousness. Our instant healing flowed from his wounding. Now I love the way it says this in the Passion Translation. That his instant healing, our instant healing flowed from his wounding. In other words, 
I mean, this is a, another tradition of men uh, in the same kind of arena, is that people believe that there's a timing to healing. Well, it must not, he got prayed for, he got prayer, it, it, but nothing happened. It must not be his time. Listen, the time has already happened. It's just like saying if FedEx was going to drop a package off at your door and you didn't go outside and pick it up, it's and you're just sitting inside going, well, it must not be the right time yet, but the package is on your porch. <laughs> the package is on your porch. Healing is right there for you. Instant healing is right there. Now, we do have to deal with it. If I pray for you and healing doesn't happen, whose fault is it? It's not your fault. No matter how much, listen, if you are unconscious in the hospital or you were dead in a coffin, your faith does not come into play. Yet you can be healed and you can be raised from the dead. So it's not the sick person's fault. It's not the devil's fault. Definitely not God's fault. He's already done it. Whose fault is it? It's my fault. I take responsibility. I am the log jam. I have to become uh, free. I have to be able to flow in this great gift, this mighty anointing of Jesus to walk in the earth. I can't be a fake. I can't be a hypocrite. I've, I can't be holding on to my own life and, pro, and just giving words and lip service to Christianity. I got to be the real deal, man. I got to be the real stinking deal for this to work. And we've got to be the real deal. We've got to find out how to walk in power. And uh, people are going to try to steal that from you. They're going to try, try to take that away from you. The enemy is going to be against you, and you're going to have to get really aggressive in order to begin to flow in this power in a consistent way. And we can flow in this power. We can walk in this power and we can release the power of God at will. How do we release it at will? Because it's already been done. And Jesus said, heal the sick. Also in James, it says, call for the elders. If anyone sick, call for the elders. They'll anoint you with oil and the prayer of faith shall raise them up. We, we speak, Jesus said, whatsoever things you desire when you pray, uh, believe that you receive them, you shall have them. And, and in that same verse, he says, whoever shall speak to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea, shall not doubt in his heart, but believe the things that he says, he shall have what he says. Who is shall, ever, shall speak, whoever says, shall have what he says. So we're not even talking about asking the Father for anything. We're talking about the ability to release the power of God at will with our words, at will with our intent. And faith follows intent, and power follows faith. All right. <clears throat> Jesus carries our sins in his body on the cross that we would die to sin. The Greek word there, like I mentioned, means to die to something and live for righteousness. All right. This comes out of the Old Testament prophecy from Isaiah. Isaiah 53.5 uh, says, But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace, and with his wounds we are healed. Passion Translation says, But it was because of our rebellious deeds that he was pierced, and because of our sins that he was crushed. He endured the punishment that made us completely whole, and in his wounding we found our healing. All right. Uh, 2 Corinthians, I'm going to read another verse here, 2 Corinthians 1, 19 and 20. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, whom we proclaimed among you, Sylv Sylvanus and Timothy, and I, was not yes and no, but in him it is always yes. For all the promises of God find their yes in him. That is why it is through him that we utter our amen to God for his glory. In other words, God doesn't promise something and then take it back. He doesn't say yes and then tomorrow say no. Healing is not based on your performance. Healing is not based on your performance. It's a gift. He already did it. You can't earn it. He's already given it freely. He gave his son freely. Uh, I'm, I have this verse at the bottom. I'll just read it now. Romans 8, 32. For God has proved his love by giving us his greatest treasure. Who is his greatest treasure? The gift of his son, Jesus. And since God freely offered him up as a sacrifice for us all, he certainly won't withhold from us anything else that he has to give. So God has already given us the most, the most uh, 
extravagant, the most costly gift that he could possibly give. He held nothing back when he gave Jesus. He, there was no, he, he, he went bankrupt. Heaven went bankrupt by giving Jesus as a sacrifice. There was nothing hold, hold, held back. There was no other thing that God reserved for himself. When he gave Jesus, he paid full price. When the Father gave Jesus, he paid full price. Why? Well, one of the reasons why that we're reading here and that I'm teaching about is the fact that if he gave what cost him full price already, how much more will he not withhold from us any good thing? Well, but I don't see it, and it's not happening, and we ask for it, and it doesn't happen. Listen, I didn't say you'd receive it easily, but he hasn't withheld it. And you've got to learn to fight this fight. You've got to get engaged. You've got to become a good soldier. You've got to become, take responsibility. You've got to stop playing around with habitual sin. In Ephesians 5.5, 5, anyone who is guilty of uh, uh, lists some sins there, one of them is sexual sin. Think, do not think that that person shall have any access to the kingdom of heaven. Okay? Look, you've got, to, you've got to be real with God. You've got to be committed in fact, Jesus said, how about this for commitment? Jesus said, if anybody wants to follow me, he's got to die. There's got to be a death. There's got to be a finality. There's got to be uh, a work so complete that we never go back, that we, we have no options left but to follow in the footsteps of Jesus. So if God has given us his most costly gift, Jesus, how much more will he not give us all things? In other words, if we can call on his name and be saved, how much more can we speak to a mountain or can we speak to a disease or can we speak to a situation or can we speak to a demon or can we speak to a dead person and see the result of our faith take place because of God's power that he's freely given us through his son by the spirit of God. Now, a related tradition of men regarding is healing for today is that people have blamed God for the works of the enemy. Well, God's just trying to teach that person a lesson. God is trying to teach me a lesson. That's why I'm not being healed. God wants me to learn a lesson. Listen, if God does wants to teach you a lesson and you're sick, then you're in disobedience by putting on a Band-Aid or going to the hospital or taking any medicine. Why don't you learn your lesson and get, get over it like a man? But that's not the will of God. And that is not even in the Bible. You can't find it. It's not there. It's a tradition of men. It's been made up. Someone handed that down to you and it's a lie and its origin is from the devil. Its origin is from hell. Hell belched that stupid thing out to keep you from encountering God, to keep you bound, to keep chains on you so that you wouldn't wreck the planet with his glory. All right? So how do we know this? John 10.10. 10. The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. Those attributes do not belong to God. God never steals. He never kills. He never destroys. Those attributes are from the, uh, the devil. They are from hell itself. They are works of darkness. They, and G, everything Jesus did was to overturn those things. Jesus overturned Sickness, death, hell, destruction, sin. He overturned every work of darkness and then handed us his authority and said, Now you go make disciples of nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey all the things I have commanded you. He has given us authority to go liberate the planet. But if we uh, uh, view God through the attributes of the enemy, which many people do, uh, then we will never walk in authority and we will stay bound. We will stay chained and enslaved and make many more slaves just like us. So John 10, 10 goes on to say, But I came, Jesus speaking, that they may have life. Life. Life is what heals. His life is what liberates. His life is what destroys darkness. <clears throat> and have it abundantly. Now, his abundant life is not just so that you can live in a bigger house and drive a better car. 
That's an American idea. His abundant life is a dead raising life. His abundant life is a deliverance abundant life. His abundant life is a demon casting out life. His abundant life is a sickness driving out life. And this life must reside in us. It must reside in us as sons of God so that when we speak a word, when we lay a hand, when we send a cloth, that the life drives out the darkness. He goes on to say, I am the good shepherd. So now he's contrasting. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come to give life because I am the good shepherd. Shepherd, the good shepherd lay his, his life down for the sheep. The good shepherd doesn't come to put his sheep in bondage. It comes to liberate his sheep by laying his life down for the sheep. So I hope I have dispelled and tore down that lie of the enemy, that healing is not for today or that God is withholding healing from you for some reason. The truth is that that. If there is a lack of healing, there is a lack of sons of God. There is a lack of revelation of Jesus. There is a lack of lordship of Jesus. And it takes the lordship of Jesus crowned on our lives to speak and have power flow. We can do it. We can have it. At some point, every single sickness will begin to be routed. At some point, every single dead person that we speak to will begin to get up. At some point, every prayer we pray will be answered. That's a promise from Jesus. Believe it. Believe it. Believe it right now in Jesus' name. And I even sense the warfare going on in people's minds and hearts as they're listening to me, uh, battling with all of the, the things that people have said, battling with all of the, the, the traditions of men that have been handed down to you. You've got to go to war. This is, this is a war. You've got to fight the good fight of faith. Like Paul says, the fight of faith is to believe the truth and dispel the lies. It's to hold your shield up, to quench every fiery dart that wants to come and destroy the truth in your life. It wants to intimidate you. And anytime intimidation comes at you, it is to unseat the truth. Intimidation comes to unseat your confidence in the truth. It's to push you off kilter. It's to push you off of balance and to keep you guessing, keep you wandering, keep you spinning, keep you tossed and fro uh, between every wind of doctrine, the Bible says. But the mature sons of God are steady and stable, mature and powerful, speaking the words of life and healing all manner of sickness and disease. So tonight, in the name of Jesus, I'm going to speak life to you. And I don't need to call out your thing for you to be healed. In fact, this I've already done enough for healing to flow. Healing's been flowing for the last half hour. But I speak to your body in the name of Jesus. Everything that is out of order, come into order right now. In the name of Jesus, be healed. You be healed by the abundant life of Jesus. You be healed by his stripes on his back. You be healed by the atonement of the blood of Jesus Christ. May your body be set free. I set free your body. I set free your family in the name of Jesus. I set free your children. May liberation run down your family line in the name of Jesus. May healing be a liberator in your family line in the name of Jesus. Every bone disease I speak to you, be healed in Jesus' name. Every blood disorder, every blood disease, every blood cancer, be healed and made whole in the name of Jesus. Every deaf ear be opened. Every mute tongue speak. Every fogged brain be made clear in the name of Jesus. Every, every uh, eye problem and problems with eyesight, vision problems, run now. Leave this person in Jesus' name. Be set free. I set you free in the name of Jesus. Now, if you're listening to me and you don't know Jesus or you don't know the Jesus 
that I speak of. The Bible says that you must be born again in order to enter into his kingdom. When you are born again, the blood of Jesus touches your life, cleanses you from all sin, and an act of repentance takes place where you leave everything that you were and you turn to follow Jesus. You turn to embrace life and you begin to reject death at all costs. So in Jesus' name, your sins be forgiven. Be filled with the Spirit of God to overflowing. The fire of heaven come upon you. The anointing of Jesus, the mission of Jesus, the words of Jesus, and the works of Jesus come on your life right now in Jesus' name. From day one of being born again, born again, one second old, you can heal the sick, you can raise the dead, you can cast out demons, you can begin to walk in the footsteps of Jesus. Well, if you're just now joining us, you can go to healjoplin.com and submit a prayer request uh, for healing, and we will begin to engage your situation within 24 hours. I invite you to join me again Thursday for a 6.30 healing live stream, also Sunday at 1.30 p.m. Central Standard Time for our Kingdom live stream. Also, if you're in the Joplin, Missouri area, join us for church on Sunday at 3 p.m. Go find out what we're doing at tran uh, transfigured.church, transfigured.church. All right. Thanks, everybody, for joining me. We'll see you next time.